Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the Universe Classics San Diego Comic Con exclusive Vicron. All right, now before we move forward with the review of this figure, allow me to explain who Vicron is. I know many folks out there may not understand exactly what this exclusive is all about. Back when Mattel was still conceptualizing the idea of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, Roger Sweet modified a few big gym figures into three very different looking action figures. One was a military man with a tank on his head, one was a spaceman which used a repurposed Boba Fett head, and one was a more familiar barbarian. The idea was that the generic name of He-Man could be used for this man who could be anything. Military, space, barbarian, you name it, that was He-Man. Of course, when Mattel went forward with Masters of the Universe, the barbarian look was obviously the sole route Mattel chose to take. Now, we already got Vicor and Demo Man in the Classics line, both of which were based on Mark Taylor's original concept sketches for He-Man and Skeletor. Now, we have the Roger Sweet Trio in figure form, which rounds out the origins of the most powerful man in the universe. Vicron comes in a special window box packaging that features the figure in his barbarian outfit in the center, with the other two outfit pieces off to either side. Now, this is what the San Diego Comic-Con version looks like. The versions of the set that will be sold on MattyCollector.com after the convention will feature either the Spaceman or the Military Man in the center instead. The back of the box shows off other figures in the Classics line, gives us a shot of Vicron wearing all three outfits, and even a wild new bio for Vicron. Alright, let's go ahead and kick things off by taking a look at Vicron in his Barbarian outfit. Let's get the big negative out of the way first. The paint job on the loincloth area on my figure is really sloppy. As you can see, there is brown paint all over his thighs. Aside from this, because of the way he was packaged with his legs squat, the loincloth was sticking straight outwards when I first removed him from the box. Now luckily the loincloth piece has returned almost to normal all by itself, but those paint smudges are a definite bummer. Now the paint job on the rest of the figure is actually really nice. I love the colors and the paint job that is used on the harness and the wrist gauntlets. The head features a helmet on his head that is molded as one piece with the black hair. Yes, the helmet does sort of look like a goblet sitting on his head upside down, but I like it, because this is how the early He-Man figure and even several of his concept sketches looked. Now the face sculpt is probably the most impressive part of this entire figure. That face sculpt, with the square chin and pronounced cheekbones, looks more like the vintage He-Man face than the current classics He-Man does. It makes you wonder if there are plans to reuse this face sculpt for future He-Man figures. Now as a weapon, Vicron has a large battle axe for his barbarian costume. This is also based on the original prototype. It features a long handle with a cool spiral design, as well as some cool designs on the actual blades. I really like the look of this axe, and you can get some really cool single or two-handed poses with it. Alright, so let's take a closer look at everything we've got going on with Vicron here. With all these different accessories and interchangeable pieces, he's very unique. He's something that we really haven't seen yet in the Classics line. But we'll first start with him and the Barbarian look here. Take a look at how the articulation works. Uh, now, of course, the way this figure works, the cape piece is actually the back part of the armor. So it's not a separate piece that actually is just the back of the armor. And it's made of the same uh, type of plastic that the rest of the harness is. So it's just kind of molded onto the back of the 
the harness there. The head can of course rotate all the way around. The arms can move exactly the same, bicep cuts, elbow cuts. Uh, you do have a wrist swivel there. All of the joints and articulation seems really tight. You can see he's got a great sitting pose going on there. You can split the legs all the way out, put them all the way forward. Uh, he does have the newer ankles, so the pin is covered up, and the ankles are very tight on this figure. So articulation-wise, he's great. It's very tight. It's very sturdy. We don't have to worry about that at all. Uh, now, I did, of course, already point out the sloppy paint job down here, and you can kind of see how his loincloth piece is sticking straight outwards. Uh, that's because he was in the package in kind of a squat position. So it came out kind of warped like that. Now it is made of that softer plastic that a lot of the figures have been lately. Um, so the good news is that it's kind of going back to normal on its own, but it, it, it's kind of a shame that it was stuck out like that. When I first pulled him out, it was literally like this. It was just sticking straight out. It was so silly. So it's going back to normal and that's good, but the paint of course is pretty sloppy. So let's go ahead and take a look at how all of the different parts actually remove from this. As you probably saw, I kind of popped the hair piece off while I was moving them around. Uh, it does hold really tight, so I don't want to give the false impression that it's easy to fall off. You can see it holds pretty tight. I just, it just probably wasn't on all the way. But you can see the hair and the helmet is all one solid piece. It's molded to shape to this little peg design on the top of his head there. Um, so that's pretty cool, and like I was saying with that face sculpt, making me wonder if they could reuse it for He-Man, it looks like it'd be really easy just to make a, a new He-Man hairpiece to fit right over that, and we got ourselves an awesome new He-Man face sculpt. So it'll, I'm curious to see if that's something that's going to happen. Uh, another thing I like on here is the gauntlets with the gloves. Very 2000X Prince Adam-esque. So it's something else that kind of makes me think they've got other things going on there, which I always love catching things like this. You know, the Four Horsemen, those are smart dudes. They know what they're doing ahead of time. All right, so if we want to take the Vicron, the Barbarian Vicron stuff off, helmet piece comes off, the shin guards pop off. You can see they don't cover the full back of the boots. They're just shin guards. They just pop off. They're hard pieces of plastic, kind of like the old armor pieces. Um, they've got grooves on the insides that form fit right over the furry part of the boots. So they actually snap on really tight and they hold nice and tight when you get them on there. So you can just pop those off and then the armor unsnaps from the cape and pulls off similar to the old stuff but this is definitely unique as far as the harnesses go. Uh, the way this works is you can see that there's like square peg pieces on the ends of the harness and then just like these little holes in the back on the furry cape part. They just press in to those holes, those little grooves and that's how it locks in place. Now I'll be honest that is very hard to put on the figure. It's really hard to get a good grip. You can see when I've got it off, it's easy because I can use my fingers to press the pieces into the holes. When this is on his back, it's not as easy to press those into the little holes there. So it's going to take a little bit of work. It's not the easiest thing to get off or get on. It's easier to get off than it is to get on. It's not easy to get on. All right. So well, let's go ahead and put on the space armor. I'll show you how that works. This is the first one we're going to start with here. You can see there's lots of pieces to transform him into this space form. Uh, first of all, let's do the armor. Now his armor piece is another one that's really unique. Uh, you can see he's got two holes at the bottom and then there are two pegs on the inside of the belt. The way this works is once you get it on his torso, you actually do have to kind of clip it on to the belt and then the back of the belt has a small peg and a little hole there that you press together to snap around his waist. Now I want to show you this off the figure first because off the figure you can see that it's it's kind of a struggle to get this piece together and even when you finally get the peg in there do you see how it's pulling itself apart like it's separating almost like it's not quite long enough to stretch all the way around that's the problem that I'm having with this here. It's hard to get the peg piece together and it's hard to keep it staying together. It's almost like the peg's not quite long enough or the belt's not long enough to reach all the way around. I don't know. Um, but let me show you when you actually put it on the figure here. The shoulder armor just kind of folds over the arms like this. And then we get the belt piece. And again, this just like that armor with the cape, it's not so easy to press this into the peg holes while he's wearing it on his torso. It's actually kind of complicated, unfortunately. Urgh. It's actually a little aggravating, to be perfectly honest. Trying to get this piece on here. 
just doesn't work the way you want it to or as easy as you'd like it to. You kind of have to press the armor together. There we go. Got the pegs snapped in the front. Now, watching to trying to put this on the back is where it gets even more complicated because you have to kind of press this belt together. It almost doesn't quite make it around his waist. And then you have to try to press that thing over to the peg hole, but it's it has a real hard time staying put. Even when you think you've got it, you get it pressed on there. Put some good pressure. I just it doesn't stay very good at all. I mean, I've gotten it to stay a couple times, but it always seems to just pop right off. So unfortunately, it just doesn't seem like that's a really well working piece. Now I hope it's different. Maybe it'll be different on the actual San Diego releases. I just I am not having any luck with that piece. He's got this jetpack. Uh, it is made of kind of a soft, pliable plastic. You can see how flexible it is. The missile bends, the wings bend. Uh, it's got a little knob on the back of his armor. Just clips on there. It's nice and tight. The helmet fits right over the groove where the hair and helmet went, other helmet went. So it just kind of fits over his head like that. Snaps into place. Then you have these gauntlets for his arms and the boot covers. Uh, they're made of that same hard plastic that the other ones were. And the insides actually have an R and an L. So you can tell which ones go on the right and which ones go on the left. They just kind of snap on the arms here. They, they are made to just kind of fit over the forearm. So you can really kind of snap it on just the place that it fits the best. And it holds really good. You can hear how it clicks on. It's got a nice tight hold. Uh, the boot covers are the same as the other ones where they have the grooves that fit over the furry part of the boot. So you just pop those on like such. Of course, they don't cover the back of the boots. The back of the boots are wide open. Uh, it's more meant, I guess, for display in the front. Another thing is, of course, with this going over the foot, that's going to hinder your ankle articulation. It might pose some problems with standing him because you can't pose the ankles. But everything stays on him very nice. It's good and solid. And now we've got our spaceman. As the original concept figure actually utilized the head of a Kenner Boba Fett figure, the design of this helmet is of course very similar. In fact, some of the details on the helmet even almost match that of Boba Fett's helmet. The difference of course are the shape of the top and the lack of a black visor over the eyes. Now personally I think I would have liked it a little more if it still had that visor, but I assume Mattel didn't want it looking too much like Fett. The armor pieces are a mixture of orange and white and do a pretty good job of recreating the look of the armor from that original concept figure, though it's not quite as detailed as the barbarian harness is. For his weapon, he gets a black laser looking rifle. It's made of a softer plastic, but it's not overly gummy. It fits nicely in either of his hands, but it's not quite long enough for him to do any kind of two-handed poses. Alright, so now we're ready to go from Spaceman to Military Man. So we'll pull all these pieces off here, pop the helmet over the head, remove the belt, pull off that shoulder armor, remove the gauntlets, remove the boot covers. Now with this, you actually will remove the head as well. Now the head removes just like all of the other classics figures. It's on the same kind of ball joint there. And that's because the tank head utilizes that standard ball joint. So first of all, we're going to put the armor on. And this is one of those armors that just slides over the shoulders. And then it's got a belt piece that wraps around the back. It's got a small hole in the peg. And it works much better than the space one. As you can see, I popped it right on. No problems. It's first try. Uh, the boots are the same way. They've got the R and the L on the inside. They've got the grooves on the inside, so they just pop right over the furry part of his boots there. They clip on nice and tight. They're made of that same rigid plastic. Uh, once again, they're going to hinder the articulation in your feet, obviously, because there's, these ones are so big, but these do have the really cool big like tank pieces coming off the side, so it is going to hold them up well. You, know, you shouldn't have to worry about him toppling over because he's got a nice wide base. And then the arm gauntlets are the exact same as before. They just snap right over the forearms there. And then the head pops right over the peg. 
And just like that, we've transformed him into the military man. So it's much easier to put this armor on than the space armor. Uh, it fits really nicely. The gun piece on the tank, you can see, is made of that real pliable plastic. Of course, that's probably a safety thing. Um, so it's real bendy and flexy, but the actual headpiece is solid. It actually feels like the same kind of plastic any of the regular heads are made out of. And the articulation on the figure is pretty good otherwise. I mean, the feet are hindered, but he still moves just like a regular Masters figure would. He's definitely the most interesting design in the set, but to be honest, I think he's my favorite. I know he's odd, but I think that's the appeal to me. The tank head actually has what appears to be eyes and a nose on the front, which does make him look a bit cartoony. The armor is all a military green, complete with white stars, so it's definitely got that very American military theme going on. But remember, He's based on a concept figure. This was before there was even a thought of Eternia. I actually really like the paint job of the green too. There's a nice wash on there that really gives it some nice detailing. For an accessory, he gets a nice machine gun looking weapon, which is made out of the same softer black plastic, but looks really cool with the figure. So there you go guys, there's a look at this year's San Diego Comic Con exclusive. I know it's very obscure, and I also know that it's very, very goofy looking. There is no denying that. But in my opinion, a set like this makes for a perfect convention exclusive. We don't have to worry about it being a core character that not everyone will be able to get. If you don't want it, it should be an easy pass. But for those who do, it makes for a really nice bonus. And that is exactly how a convention exclusive should work, in my opinion. Plus, as I've stated in the past, I'm a big fan of concept figures. I know not everybody loves concept figures, but they are always one of my favorite things to collect. Putting this trio on the shelf next to Vicor and Demo Man will make for an awesome display, showcasing the roots of He-Man as created by the talents of Mark Taylor and Roger Sweet. And I love that. The negatives, of course, are that the removable armor doesn't quite work as well as I wanted it to, and the paint job on mine is a little sloppy, but hopefully that's not going to be the case on everybody's. But the removable armor is a good way to avoid an expensive three-pack of figures, I guess. Now the problem is that some of us are going to end up buying three anyway so that we can display all three costumes at once, so I don't know. Maybe a three-pack just would have been the right way to go. Vicron will be available first at the 2012 San Diego Comic Con, and after that on MattyCollector.com. Until next time...